Hello and welcome to the De Havilland Aircraft Museum. I'm standing next to one of our exhibits, the famous DH-82 Tiger Moth. The Tiger Moth was the primary initial trainer for the RAF from 1931 to 1951. And during World War II, up to 100,000 RAF pilots would have learned to fly in it. But the ancestry of the Tiger Moth goes back to 1925. That was when Geoffrey de Havilland took control for the first time of the DH-60 Moth. The DH-60 Moth was the plane that ensured that the de Havilland Aircraft Company was a main contributor to the British aviation industry for most of the 20th century. This video is our tribute to the original Moth that led to, amongst others, the Tiger Moth, the Hornet Moth, the Fox Moth and the Dragon Moth. Geoffrey de Havilland had an interest in aviation from an early age. During his early working life, he was an aircraft designer for several companies. But it wasn't until he started the de Havilland Aircraft Company in 1920 that he started to work on his vision to address the up-and-coming civilian market. It was clear that a new aircraft design was needed for the many flying schools that were being set up during the time. And it was then that de Havilland launched the DH-60 Moth. This was a two-seater aircraft, so it could be used for flying training and it was robust enough to be flown by inexperienced pilots. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe and check out the other content from the museum. The Cirrus engine, like its successor the Gypsy One, was designed in the conventional manner of the time. The pistons at the top and the crank at the bottom. However, this caused a problem. The pilot had very limited view caused by the protruding cylinder heads. Frank Halford decided to invert the engine so that the cylinders were below the crank and this engine, the Gypsy 3, was its creation. The successor to the Gypsy 3, the Gypsy Major 1, powered the Tiger Moth along with other subsequent types. The Moth fuselage was made from plywood, just like the fuselage from this Queen Bee, which you can see at the museum. The fact that it was made out of plywood means that it was easy to manufacture, easy to maintain and can easily be repaired after an accident. So this is the Queen Bee and it first flew in 1935. It was created by using the fuselage from a Moth Major, pairing it with the wings from a Tiger Moth and adding a radio receiver so it could be flown by remote control, making it one of the first ever drones to fly. But why was the moth called a moth? Well, apparently, Geoffrey de Havilland, who was keen on insects, christened it the moth because of the way the wings folded. The wings on the tiger moth were further forward than they were on the original D860 moth. They're also swept back, so you can parachute from the front cockpit to comply with RAF requirements. If you'd like to know more about the wings on the tiger moth, click on the link. Some of you may have a favourite de Havilland aircraft. It could be the Mosquito, the famous Wooden Wonder, or the Tiger Moth, or even the first jet commercial airliner, the Comet. But whatever it is, none of them would have been made if it wasn't for the original DH-60 Moth going into production and becoming a successful seller. <laughs> 